Hello, Charlie Sink here. So I needed a couple switches for my future car and engine storage shed for my backyard railroad. I've built switches in smaller scales, but for one and a half inch scale where the switch can actually see significant wheel weight and side loads, I figured I'd better do some research. Looking at one-to-one -one scale railroads, I realized the shape and geometry of the frog, rails, and points was actually pretty complex. No, not like that. More like this, where the frog points and guardrails don't look so simple. So in this video, I'll go over the design and construction of my number five switch based on what I learned from looking at real track switches. Welcome to the Little Mountain Mining and Timber Railroad. So I started looking at full-size switches, technically turnouts if you want to be politically correct, and specifically the design of the movable parts, the points, how they worked and how the pointy end could actually carry the load of the wheels running over it, and also the design of the frog. As always on my projects, I like to put together a 3D model to work out all the kinks before investing time and money in materials. So here's how the points look in full-size and on my number five switch. So the challenge is this, make the pointy end really pointy so the wheel flange will nicely engage it and not derail, but also have the point be strong enough to handle taking on the wheel flange and the weight of the train. The solution is this, and very similar to yard switches on full-size roads. First, the point rail is bent slightly. Then the side is milled off. Then the head on the inner side is milled off. Then a groove is milled down the length of the bent portion to make room for the wheel flange. Here's how it looks in one-to-one -one scale. The frog was also a challenge. And you know, every block of aluminum has some railroad part buried inside it. It's just up to the builder to discover it. <laughs> anyway, so here's the build. I like to use an assembly jig both for the turnout and also for track sections. Saves my knees and back trying to assemble track on the ground. It makes things way easier and way more accurate for assembly. The jig is made from half inch plywood with tie spacer blocks screwed down to it. On my curved and straight track sections, ties are one and a half inch by one and a half inch by 14 inches long, spaced two inches apart. On the switch, the tie length increases from 14 inches to 24 and a half inches along the length of the switch following my 3D CAD model. So let's get started.
here it is all finished. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I really like how the mechanism worked on the points. Um, I think the only thing I would do additionally is put some kind of a cover over the spring mechanism. So if someone's dragging their feet, they don't catch on the spring and wreck it or catch the foot. Um, otherwise, I think it's great. I can't wait to get cars rolling over it on the railroad. But uh, that's it for this video. So uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.